Hey gang, it's Mr. Spencer. Now we've been doing a lot of talking in class about how to set up scientific experiments. So we've talked about things like uh, what kind of questions are, are scientific questions? How do we identify variables? How do we uh, make a hypothesis? How do we set up the step-by-step -step procedure? And those are all really important things to understand. But the most important part of what we're doing here is being able to collect the data, collect the numbers that's gonna help us answer our question. So today what I want to do is walk through how to create data tables and graphs for scientific experiments because that's the most important part. That's where you show what it is you found in your, in your experiment. But you need to do it in a certain way that's organized and, and makes sense. So the big idea here is that we want to use the independent and dependent variables in certain places in our data tables and graphs when we're doing those experiments. So let's, let's do it this way. Let's, um, kind of, let's use a, a question that we've talked about in class to show how to set up the, the data tables and, and graphs. So if I use the question, how high does a ball bounce when it's dropped from different heights? Okay, that's something that, that we can measure. That's something that, that we can test. So the first thing we need to do is uh, go and identify those variables. So I look at the question, how high does a ball bounce when it's dropped from different heights? And I want to think, okay, what are the two things that I'm measuring here? Well, if I'm doing this, I've got, um, so how high the ball bounces. And we've also got when it's dropped from different heights, so the, the drop height. So when I try to figure out independent and dependent variables, I'm going to think, okay, I'm in charge of the independent variable. Okay, so I look at these and I say, okay, well, I've got how high the ball bounces when it's dropped, and then I've got the different heights that I'm dropping it from. So which one of those am I in charge of? Well, I'm, I'm going to be in charge of the, the height that I drop it from. So my independent variable is my, is my drop height. The dependent variable depends on the, the independent variable. So in this case, how high it bounces depends on the drop height. Now that's going to be really important for these next few steps. Um, so the very first thing we do is we set up our, our data table. Now a data table, that's just how we kind of keep track of all of our measurements. All of the numbers that, that we collect, it goes there in the data table. And just as a little reminder, this was always something that I struggled with when I was in, in, in science. Um, the columns, okay, think columns in a really fancy building, those go up and down. Okay, the rows go side to side to side. So what I want to do here is show you just a generic way to set up the data table depending on the dependent and independent variables. So the first thing that you're going to want to have in your data tables, you need to have a title. People need to know what it is you're talking about. And the way you set that up is you, you talk about the dependent variable versus the independent variable. Also in the left hand column, that's where you put your independent variable. And you'll notice here how you have the, the brackets and then units. Well, units are what we use to measure the independent variable. And I'll show you an example of that here in a little bit. Now next, we have our dependent variable to the, to the right of the independent variable column. And once again, we, we label the, in, or the dependent variable, we label the units that we're measuring it in. And then you'll notice right down here, we have trial one, trial two, trial three, and average. Well, that's where we start talking about the importance of doing multiple trials. You want to test each independent variable multiple times or several times in order to get an average, in order to kind of see if uh, or avoid what are called outliers, things that, that might not be, be correct. So you need to, once again, test each one of those independent variables several times to find the average. Well, let me give you an example using uh, the, the question that we've already talked about. So if I'm testing the, the bounce height versus the drop height, the way I'm going to set that up is my independent variable goes right here. So we've talked about this before, that the height that I drop the ball from, that is going to be my independent variable. I'm measuring that in centimeters. And in this case, I've chosen the drop heights to be 50 centimeters, 100 centimeters, 150 centimeters, and 200 centimeters. Now you know I didn't put centimeters next to everyone. That's because, once again, we know that we're being everything in this column is being measured in centimeters. Now my dependent variable, 
that's the bounce height. So that goes to the, those go to the right of the independent variable column. And I have several trials. So I have my trial one, trial two, trial three. So I tested 50 centimeters three times, and these are the results that I had. When I average those out, this is what I got. Same thing with 100. I tested it three times. This is the average that I got. So that's how we set up the data table. Now, what we do next is we use the data table to create the graph. And graphs, what those do is those show the trends in our data. And most of the time when we're doing this, um, it's, you don't have to graph all of the trials. Just do the averages. Um, so that way we can clean it up a little bit and there's not so many data points on there. But here's, once again, a generic graph the way we would set this up. We, as always, we have our title, so it's dependent variable versus independent variable. Here on the horizontal axis, or the x-axis, this is where we have the independent variable. So, and then we want to make sure we have our units, how it's being measured. And then on the, the vertical axis, the, the y-axis, we have our dependent variable, and also measured in units. So here's what a graph would look like that we took from our data table that we were using for the, the bounce height versus the drop height. You notice that drop height, once again, that's my independent variable. So um, I have it measured here. I have my units. Over here, I have my average bounce height, and that's on the, the, horiz or the vertical axis, once again, being measured in centimeters. And then I can plot that and kind of get a feel for the, the trend that's going on. So I hope that helps you out with uh, understanding how to use the independent variable and dependent variable to make the data tables and graphs. And let me know if you have any questions.